Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in. My name is Kendall Fisher, Oracle TV anchor, and we are live from New York City where Oracle Red Bull Racing is about to kick off their new season. Now today's event is going to be packed with exciting announcements, opportunities for you, our Red Bull Racing fans, to engage more with your favorite team exciting interviews with Oracle Red Bull Racing executives and of course, the season 19 car revelation. Now, we know you're all tuning in from so many parts of the world, so we wanna hear from you. Make sure you tell us where you're watching the Oracle Red Bull Racing season launch, and hey, drop some thoughts on today's event or your inspiration for our drivers as they head into the new season. And while we're talking about this new season, we thought, what better way to kick it off than looking back at some of 2022's highlights from the record-setting championship season. Take a look at this moment where we took Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez off the racetrack and put them into the open sea with Sail GP. Just a little faster. You're doing a good job here. Oh, nice, Max. Oh, okay, get him. okay, Max, you're on. There are a lot of similarities between Sail GP and F1 the fastest cars on land, the fastest seagoing vessels. We're, close to contact. we're always trying to push the boundaries of our sport and we're going faster than we've ever gone before. Go on, Checo. Go on. We're going to be doing some racing, but not on track. Nice, Max. You're, going to get You're making me look bad, eh? These are two of the most technologically advanced sports. A couple of big waves Hi, coming. Ah. Give me five more. And they are both running their strategy on Oracle Cloud infrastructure. Go, 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 go. go. One. Oracle Red Bull Racing have joined us here in Centre Page. Oracle obviously being a sponsor of both Sao GP and F1. These are the most technologically driven sports that we have and they're keen to come and check out our boat. So you are here, invited by Oracle at the Sail GP. I'm gonna do some sailing today, I think. I mean, I've, I've never really done it before, so uh, it's gonna be a good experience. So this is the F50. The boats can do uh, above 90 kilometers an hour. It depends a lot on the wind or...? or it does, it yeah, matter. it depends on the wing. And we also have a bunch of different setups. You know, as you guys deal with aerodynamic drag, the real drag comes from the water, hydrodynamic drag. Once you can lift the entire boat out of the water, you just eliminate all this drag. It's really impressive. Have you guys done much sailing? No? No. Oh, no. perfect. No. So I think that's great. <laughs> yeah, it's probably a good thing. Yeah. People are blown away when they've seen F50 for the first time. The fact that it lifts out of the water and then takes off is an incredible sight. They are proper race boats, a lot of carbon involved, aerodynamics, the foils. Yeah, there's a lot to it. And um, yeah, we get to experience that today. It's pretty cool that we're able to take these high level athletes and throw them on the boat and to actually go and push it in a race. They'll be filling the sixth sailor role. We will be going head to head with the Aussies out there. These yeah. guys are defending champs, so we've got good competition today. You're on the US team, but what, what, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> they didn't make the cut. Yeah. <laughs> if you want, we could show you the grinding machines. If you guys want to have a look. 672 watts. I think you will be good at this, Checo. <laughs> but thank you. Hey. I'm taking up. Come on, Checo. Four, three, two, Woo. one. How much? 416. Five, four, three, two, <laughs> one. 427. Just got you. I went there. <laughs> These F50s are more like a spaceship than a conventional sailboat. They have 800 sensors delivering 3,000 pieces of data every second. Our sports are so similar, how they interact with their teams, with their strategies. It's amazing what they do. We had the Oracle Center, the Cloud Center, which we went through, and strategy is, of course, extremely important, and you have to run billions of simulations. Because of Oracle, uh, we upped up by 25%. This is the data center. 
Is this for everyone? Okay, this is everyone. The umpires have a similar setup, but they're all based actually in the UK, right? Mm -hmm. And they'll decide live, okay, this boat has a penalty. And you oh. see this one here? That's the British hitting the Japanese. Oh! Shit! Oh! I guess they got a penalty for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, we've seen yeah. the boat. We've seen the data centre. Let's get you guys ready and yeah. head on the water. Hey, Jimmy, I hear you've drafted a couple of new recruits to help you beat me. I've got Red Bull's finest, Tommy. Yeah. See you on the water. Team USA, Team USA, this is the race committee for a radio check. Over. Yeah, hey, Mel, we're a little soft in the comms. One, two, one, two. We'll do a little sailing just so you get a feel for it. Yeah, but feel comfortable. <laughs> yeah. What could possibly go wrong? Yep, it's quite choppy, eh? One, mark, and turning. Hey, Max, you get to have a stair mode. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Got a little mode. to the left? Yeah, pretty okay. good. What's yeah. it feel like to the car? Uh, it's a completely different experience, but it's really cool. You can sort of feel it slide, you know? It's a more like, yeah. These boats have a GPS system on them. Yeah. It's accurate to within two and a half centimetres. They're going at fast and fast now? No. Faster. Oh, yeah. Two, one, lock, thinning. I'm going to try. Oh, all right. Here he comes. Nice, mate. All good, mate? Yeah, all good. It's nice to see. Uh, it's really cool. I think what they're going to do now is, I think we swap. I think Checo comes on. Yeah. Thanks, mate. So, so, Max, what was it like when the boat lifts out of the water? Yeah, I mean, I was really surprised how smooth it was. Actually, the, the faster you go, I found that the easier I was to change uh, sides. 62, that's got to be when you were driving, I reckon. I was trying to keep my head down, but... Uh... Let's go, guys. i do some sailing. Wow. No, you're turning right. You're turning, should be able to get it. OK, coming back, it'll be H1 out of this. Ah. Come by tack, let's get stable here. Full speed out of this, guys. Full speed. And, and my rake. Yep. Get up, guys. Keep it up. Two, one. Ah. <laughs> Trying to build. Hey, no, just going to take some rudder off so we get some dip. The Running. inside on this here. Good pressure out of this. <laughs> <laughs> Only one thing. No one's enough. Nice smoke. Well done, man. Checker, you're going to swap with Max, so we need to give him your comms. What's the plan exactly? We're going to set up, and there'll be a race. Basically, from there, we're going to do attack, and then we can come straight back and finish in here. This is Team Australia. Do you have a, an approximate start time? Team Australia, Team USA. The start time is 13.55 local time. The course is as discussed. All right, Ed, I want you to fly it on the ragged edge today. So far this season, we're on top of the table. Look, we're going to be out there racing. We're not going to pull any punches. We're going to try to show them why the Aussies are on top, but it'll be interesting to see how USA go with a bit more racing experience. The countdown there says 3.48, 3.47. That's how long to the start. And you'll see the software will help us so we can be there right on top. Right, OK, yeah. By far the best position here. Two, one, race start now. The USA had a better position and were able to use the rules to stop the other boat getting on its foil. Just to the left of that mark. Okay, just look over your shoulder here. Nice, Max. Got the left of here. Just a little fast, you're doing a good job here. Nice, Max. You're going to get him. Two, and turning. One, lock. Are we going to swap, Max? My rank. Okay, hands you. Okay, Max, you're off. Nice, Max. Smoke. All boats, all boats. This is Mothership Brad. Confirming that the activation finished. Looking to head back to the tech site, please. All right, I think we're just going to head back. I have to take up foiling, mate. <laughs> yeah. You're making me look bad, eh? <laughs> I feel like I can learn to sail kit here right now. Are we just going to head straight for those super yachts, Max? Uh, then we give them the finger. <laughs> We survived. 
Very lovely. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, I decided I quit Formula One. <laughs> it was awesome to get both Max and Checo out there. I think I can safely say that Tom and I are really big fans of the F1, and those two drivers clearly are just good guys, but they were genuinely really excited about it. The first time you take off, you don't know what to expect, so you're just like trying to look at what they're doing and how they're balancing. It was a really cool experience, and then at one point you get a bit confident in what you're doing, or at least trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> to get out there and see those guys getting out there and enjoying what we do for a living, uh, it was pretty cool, and seeing some of their reactions about some of the forces in the turns, that they really enjoyed it, that, that's great. It puts sailing on the map. You know, everyone was worried about Max and Checo finding their sea legs with SailGP, but I think they coasted through that experience. Okay, I won't be using any more sailing puns for today, but we will see Max and Checo later at today's event. But first, how about we take a look back at one of my personal favorite moments with Oracle Red Bull Racing when they visited the Oracle TV set at Cloudworld 2022. Welcome back and good thing you are here because we are joined in studio by none other than Oracle Red Bull Racing team principal and CEO Christian Horner as well as our 2022 Formula One world champion Max Verstappen. Max, Christian, thank you both so much for coming on Oracle TV. Thanks for having us. Um, first things first, have to give you a huge, huge congratulations on a double world becoming double world champion um, and doing it in such a dominant way with several races left to go. Um, not to mention, you are one of the few athletes in the sport to clinch that title back to back like that. Congratulations to you both. Thank you. Very exciting. So what's, uh, what's more nerve wracking, racing in front of a th thousands of people or being on stage in front of thousands yeah, of people? Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're probably the driving bit is easier for him because he's got a crash helmet on. There's not the interference of, of everybody else. But it's fantastic to see in the US just how much interest there is in Formula One. And uh, it's my first time ever in Vegas. And, uh, you know, to think we're coming back in 12 months to be racing here is it's going to be an unbelievable race. So your f first time in Vegas, do you know the golden rule about Vegas? I've bought my wife, so I, I, I don't think there's anything I need to be concerned about. <laughs> there's no about. danger there. Yeah, also thank you for shout out, yeah. shouting out to those of us who are a big fan of your wife as well. Oh, very yes. good. Yes. <laughs> yes, I, I think tattoo somewhere. Yeah, yeah right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, in your conversation with Safra, you talked about that connection with fans. Yeah. Um, can you tell us more about that? What are, what are some of the favorite ways you've seen fans engage with the team in meaningful ways? Well, the fans for us are, are everything because without the fans, there is no Formula One, there is no sport. And so uh, to see the sport engaging with such a new audience, with young fans, with female fans. And so for us, being able to interact is so, so important. So working with Oracle, you know, with the uh, initiatives that we've set up that enable us to get closer to our fan base, allow our fans to interact with the team, um, you know, is only, a, is only a really positive thing. Now, Max, another point of the discussion, I know you were in kind of being able to listen in on, on Christian and Safra's conversation, but another point of the discussion was the success of your team and how it rides on data and analytics. What is the relationship and interaction really between you as the racer and your strategists? I mean, to be honest, I think it's more like Christian said, you know, the bigger the logo becomes on the side of the car, the faster we go. So I don't know what we, I don't know what we have to do next year. Exactly. But, uh, we need a bigger car. We can need a bigger car, bigger logo. Yeah, yeah, yeah I love that. No, I love that. I mean, it's, it's been, again, this year, um, you know, of course, we've had quite, let's say, straightforward races, but some of them, great example, I think, in Hungary, where we had a bit of bad luck in qualifying, you know, we had to start 10 and at that track is very hard uh, to pass cars. And uh, we really had to rely on our strategy to stay calm and just make moves through the pit stops. And yeah, that was just a, a perfect execution from the whole team. And we ended up winning the race there. Yeah. Um, and kind of like 
taking that, like, I guess un unraveling that, taking the layers back on that, right? Can you kind of walk us through how you and the strategists are each using data before and then during the race? Yeah, I mean, already even before the weekend starts, you know, they're running 4 billion uh, simulations. And um, also due to being partnered up with Oracle right now, we, we've been able to up that by 25%. I mean, wow. that's an incredible number. Um, and then throughout the weekend, of course, we're driving, we're practicing, you get even more information to use. And um, then on the Sunday morning, everything's ready. Before we jump in the car, you know, we have our meetings and we have all different kinds of scenarios we, we can use. And that's also what we did throughout the race because that was not straightforward and you have to really work around it. And yeah, luckily, because of all the data we had available, we could make the right calls. I'm wondering in the course of a race, there are many things that can happen, a crash, weather, rain, a lead change. Um, how much of your response to that is based on the data analysis and how much comes down to your instinct? I think it's always um, a good combination to have it together. I mean, when it starts raining or the other way around where, you know, it, it is wet and it starts drying out, it also sometimes relies on feeling. But let's say when you just have the, the normal dry race, the more data you have and the more possibilities you have, it will help you because it just gives you so much more insight of what is the right call and what, what way to go. And I think that's really something, you know, especially this year, but also last year already, we have been learning and really improving on. That's actually something we talk a lot with, with our customers. It's finding that balance, right? You, re you can rely on the data and the analytics so much. That's what gets you there. That's what you, you are utilizing 95, 90, maybe 99% of the time, but there's still the gut. You still have to go with your gut. There's sure. that balance there. Sure. What, and Christian, what would you add to that? I mean, that, I feel like there's also some part of it in in sports that becomes muscle memory, right? So the more you're thinking about and practicing simulations, things like that, um, then those those sudden things that happen on the racetrack, yeah, there's instinct and you have to react, but does some of that become muscle memory? Well, look, I think the biggest variable for us is the driver, and he's creating all, all the data. So we're obviously continually trying to understand what's going on with the car, what you know, using that data to make sure we're giving the driver the tools that he needs to do his bit, to d deliver his part. So, and of course you need the two things working in, in harmony. And that's the great thing about a, you know, a driver like Max is that his, his understanding of how to, to utilize the data to drive the car forward, uh, you, know, you know, is phenomenal. And, and Max, um, just getting back to this idea of these simulations, how, how is the use of the data and the simulations impacted your your performance and also your confidence as a driver? Uh, not not confidence related, but I mean, it, it always helps when you have a really like clear picture of what's in front of you and what we want to do today. And um, yeah, I mean, of course it also, you know, the people around me, they haven't really changed a lot and it's really nice to, to just keep on growing together. Um, but yeah, because of all the possibilities we have now, you know, um, it's a lot easier to work with everyone and uh, make, make the right calls at the end. Yeah, that confidence is just inherent in you, isn't it? <laughs> you always have to be confident. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, do, I, I do believe that it's very important, you know, to be very uh, successful in, in Formula One. And, and really in, in anything, as a business leader, if you have to be confident in the decisions that you're making, right? I think so. Christian, what else is driving success for the team? How are you keeping everyone closely aligned on, on vision, on strategy, on goals, especially you know, with kind of what happened, we can talk about this now, but with what happened at the beginning of the season, it was a little sure. rough there for a second. Sure, everybody's just gotta be focused on the same goal, on the same objective. And of course, the, the one commonality for everybody in the whole business is the car. And it's all about the car. How can we improve the performance you know, of the vehicle? And I think that uh, you know, we had a tough start to the beginning of the year, a few DNFs, but you know, we didn't panic and nobody lost sight of what the goals, what the objectives were. And everybody working as one team, uh, supporting each other across the 22 different departments that we have within our, within our organization and, and, and race team, yeah. um, you know, working collectively to make sure we're delivering the performance, the reliability, the strategy to enable Max to do his job. Yeah, I love that you just brought that up. It's the vision and having that one goal. I don't know if you could hear on stage when you were getting ready to go up there, but we had Diane from Johnson Controls go up, go up yeah. and she talked about just that. They're going through a major transformation. They're constantly trying to get better. Um, they're even kind of, kind of coming up with a new identity right now. Um, and she said, 
But with all of that, and even with that change, we keep in mind what our vision is. We do not lose sight of that goal. So I think that's a, a really great connection, again, to business and to everything that, that we're talking about here. Um, Max, so it's actually funny. You guys are, you know, coach and racer. Fritz is my boss, actually. <laughs> we just do this as like a side gig. Um, so what is it for, for you, Max, in what ways do you think Christian is able to better relate to and lead the team with his previous experience as a driver? Yeah, I mean, I think it's really important for, for the whole team. I mean, Christian knows what he's talking about. And it also makes it a lot more enjoyable, you know, because in between uh, the session or before, you know, we're talking about what we're changing on the car, but then also talking to everyone within the team. I think when you know that your boss knows what he's talking about, you yeah. know, it, it also uh, gives him a lot more respect. And um, hear, yeah, that's, I think, that also way. in our team, you know, it's just working really well. Yeah. Um, because everyone really knows also their roles and everyone respects each other and it's just a really good team atmosphere. Of course, you need the leader. That's Christian and yeah, I mean, you can, you can see um, it is just working really well. But of course, you know, everyone always looks at performance, right? And yeah. of course, performance is very important, but you also need to enjoy what you're doing and enjoy with, you know, the people around you. Yeah. I, I was uh, saying before we, we came on that I was watching a video of you on the uh, on the on a boat in San Tropez, Sail GP, uh, uh, another Oracle customer, and uh, you had a kind of a different experience there. What what did you learn on that little excursion, and and how and how they use data either the same or maybe even differently? Yeah, I was looking for the engine, but I couldn't. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't that was you. Yeah. That was yeah. you. Yeah. I saw you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just really um, find it fascinating how much data they have available as well. But the funny thing is there, everything is open for everyone, even, you know, the competitors. We're in F1, that, of course, is, is not the case. Right. Um, I'm actually quite happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, then also the teamwork, you know, they are with more people on the boat, so yeah. it's not one single person steering the boat so again there like it's all about the communication as well between them yeah and interesting yeah i was thinking well what would it be like to have another person in the car in what the if car. christian was there i would not want to be in the car no, I'm, I'm a bad passenger <laughs> <laughs> and uh you know these guys are just operating at a different level yeah. So, uh, so, so, yeah, I definitely would, would not want to be in the vehicle. Yes, yes. We talked a little bit at the top about that fan experience, that fan engagement, and I think one of the things we heard also on stage was about engaging yeah. with customers. When you think about what you guys have been through and, and establishing that um, relationship with your fans, what are some of the things that other business leaders and other types of uh, companies, w what could they learn from what you've learned? Well, Formula One and sport is polarizing, isn't it? And I think that you get you get fans of drivers, you get fans of, of teams, fans of brands. And I think that you've got to understand who your fan base is. And, and what's fantastic with Formula One at the moment is we're bringing all this new fan base into the sport. Young, uh, you know, a young demographic, a lot of females, a lot of girls getting involved and following Formula One for, for the first time. And for us, it's like, okay, how can we give them a better experience? Yeah. How can we make them feel part of the team? How can we get them to know the personalities and the drivers and the characters that are part of uh, this you know, crazy circus that goes around the world to 24 races next year? So uh, for us, that's crucial. That's the way of working with Oracle, you know, with the CRM that we have and so on, is to, to be able to really engage and understand who our fan base is and, and interact uh, and offer the best fan experience. Yeah, that interaction is is key, right? So you can, that's the only way you can understand them. And I, and I'm wondering what some of those learnings have been. Like I, I see in other sports, as they try to open up their platform to more fans, they bring in the mascots, they bring in the halftime entertainment. What what are some of the things that you guys have learned so far I in think that regard? Fans crave, you know, behind the scenes action. They want to know what's behind going on behind the cameras and so on so i think that's you know we've introduced things like a, a you know series you know, behind the charge mm -hmm. and uh that gives a bit of an insight into the, some of the pressures these guys have the team have got the build-up for a grand prix weekend uh and just giving that that experience of being able to get behind the scenes and interact you know with uh with the team yeah max with the the fans being so closely kind of integrated into the formula one experience now what is that like as a driver i mean what what does that do for you well 
I mean, um, I also have quite a few, like, let's say, home Grand Prix throughout the year. <laughs> um, it's just crazy and, and amazing to see, you know. The, I, I think before F1 was really like a closed paddock, I would say, and it really opened up a lot more and people can really walk around more, see more. And um, also because of Netflix, yeah. people really see more of an inside of the sport. So yeah. I think that has been very important. And uh, yeah, just in general, everywhere we go now, it's sold out, massive crowds. Yeah. Everyone, of course, has their own favorite driver. Um, but yeah, it's great to see all that support all over the world, to yeah. be honest. That's great. And I, I know that we do have quite a few fans tuning in right now. I know, for example, my dad and fiance are both tuning in and very excited and very jealous that I'm sitting down with you both right now. So, so many fans tuning in and we're so just, again, just so grateful for you both joining us on Oracle TV. And again, a huge, huge congratulations on, uh, on clinching that world, that 2022 Formula One world champion title. And hey, if you are tuning in right now, feel free to tweet your own congratulations to Max using the hashtag Oracle TV. And right after this quick break, we will be back with our social correspondent, Monday Mail, to share some of your celebratory words right after this. I love how Max and Christian really dove into the importance of creating that deeper fan connection. And that's really what today's event is all about. In fact, we're going to see how Oracle Red Bull Racing is taking that fan experience a step further this season. They also talked about the importance of data and analytics and the role that played in the successful season. And to dive into that a bit deeper, we have Hannah Schmitz, the principal strategy engineer for Oracle Red Bull Racing. You have to trust people. If you don't trust them, it's never going to work. We definitely had races where I wanted to pit, they said keep going. It was also the other way around. For a strategist, if you can use your drivers to help the team, not just as individuals, then that's a lot more powerful. The driver feeling is very important. We get the brakes too hot, the engineers are able to see it. But the driver is the one that feels it. There are a lot of simulations always running. We run billions of simulations, which help us pinpoint exactly where our maximum point score is. And Oracle have allowed us to do 25% more simulations than we were able to run previously. That's invaluable. The sport has evolved a lot in that side compared to 30, 40 years ago. With data, we need to be moving forward and going with the modern technology and using Oracle has been extremely powerful, really helps improve things in a very short space of time. We are so proud of how OCI brings those data and analytics to our Oracle Red Bull racing team to really prepare them for, well, anything. And we know that is going to come in handy this season as, dare I say it, we bring in that third championship title. And with that, I say we kick things off. Let's take it over to Oracle Red Bull Racing's season launch. Make sure you use the comments to chime in on any of today's awesome event and stay tuned afterwards for an interview between me and Oracle Red Bull Racing Director of Brand and Communications, Kelly Britton, to hear how Oracle Red Bull Racing is really taking that fan experience a step further. See you then and enjoy the launch.
Hello, everyone. We are live here in New York City. Oracle Red Bull Racing is here today to launch their 2023 season and give you, the fans, an up-close and personal look at the RB19. Hello, everyone. I'm Marty Smith, and joining me today is the lovely Giselle Zarzor. How'd I do? Uh, I'm yeah, working, I'm I'm do you're on. doing great. I'm working on that. I'm working yeah. on that. We can already feel the energy in the room. It is electric. We have so much to share over the next hour. Today, you'll hear from two-time world champion Max Verstappen. Let's hear it for Max, everybody. What a tremendous career is unfolding for him. And of course, today, we have the Mexican Minister of Defense himself, Mr. Sergio Perez, a.k.a. Checo. Checo is A lot here. of Mexicans here, huh? I know, I love it. Yeah. A lot of Checo fans. After the official announcement in 2022, we're finally welcoming home eight-time Grand Prix winner Daniel Ricciardo is back with Oracle Red Bull for 2023 after four long years away. Hey, Marty. Hi, everyone. I'm thrilled to be here. Let me tell you that we'll also be joined by team principal and CEO Christian Horner. We will have a first look at the new team kit for 2023 and some very special guests. Of course, it wouldn't be a season launch without a sneak peek at the RB19. Stay tuned because this is going to be quite the show. The Formula One team defended its driver championship with Max Verstappen. The 25-year-old won a record-breaking 15 races last year, including nine of the last 11 races. Max set the new mark for the most wins in an F1 season. What an unbelievable year. Tremendous year in 2022 for Max. Oracle Red Bull Racing also won the Constructor Championship in 2022 and were the only team to have both cars start in the top four in every Grand Prix last season. I think we'd all agree 2022 was a fantastic year to say the least. I want to take a moment to thank the thousands of fans around the globe who are streaming this event today. Wherever you're watching from today, you're in for quite a treat. Over the next hour, we'll take you into the world of Oracle Red Bull Racing. We'll cover where we've been, where we're going, and everything in between. As always, a massive hello to our members of the paddock and those streaming the event online. A reminder for you. All these can be found at redbullracing.com forward slash the paddock. The paddock is Oracle Red Bull Racing fantastic loyalty platform where fans can earn points, claim rewards, and enter unique competition. But much more on that later. Those eagle eye viewers may notice hidden paddock codes throughout the show. A way to redeem points and prize online. One thing that's always true of the Oracle Red Bull Racing team their willingness to take the road less traveled. What about freedom? From Las Vegas streets, desert heat to Miami Beach, from sea to shining sea. Oracle Red Bull Racing has been exploring this land even before there were roads. Without question, 
Nobody pushes the limits quite like Oracle Red Bull. What a tremendous year once again in 2022, not only achieving back-to-back -back driver championships, but also the Constructor Championship. It's wonderful to be here in New York with all of you today. Thank all of you here in the live audience for coming out. And we'll start the day, come on out, brother, with team principal and CEO of Oracle Red Bull Racing, Christian Horner. Great to see you, brother. Good morning. Congratulations on the tremendous success you guys have achieved at Oracle Red Bull. We are all so excited to be here in New York. So let's start right there. What is your impression of us unveiling the car today and, and, and opening the season here in New York? Well, look, it's, it's incredibly special to be here, you know, in the Big Apple, in, in the U.S., in New York. It's playing, uh, you know, the U.S. is playing such a big role in Formula One these days. Three Grand Prix, you know, Las Vegas coming onto the calendar as well this year. So it seemed only fitting, um, you know, to unveil the RB19 and our, our plans for the season ahead you know, here, in, here in New York City. It is unbelievable the growth of Formula One in the United States, even over the past couple of years. How do you describe it? It's been massive, and uh, you know, it's just been fantastic to see the U.S. really embracing Formula One. And uh, you know, we started with a race in Austin, and then Miami introduced last year, uh, and of course Vegas coming this year. And we're seeing the U.S. really engaging, uh, you know, in Formula One and everything that's going on. We're seeing a much younger demographic, a much younger fan base coming into the sport as well. And uh, you know, we now have so many U.S. partners. It's uh, it's a really exciting time for Formula One and you know, to particularly in, uh, in the United States. And the team performed extremely well, both in Austin and in Miami. What were the keys to you guys doing so well here in the U.S.? Um, well, look, all races carry the same points, but they were two big races that we wanted to win. And Miami being the first race was a, a super tight race. And I think that, uh, you know, that was a, a big race for Max to win, a really tight race. And then, of course, in Austin, it was a, a weekend that was, uh, you know, quite an emotional weekend. We lost our founder and chairman, Dietrich Mateschitz, and uh, you know, we had the opportunity to win the Constructors' Championship for the first time in eight years. And uh, on Sunday, you know, Max winning that race, uh, you know, Checo uh, up there on the podium as well, converted those points to, to win the, uh, and bring home that Constructors' Championship. You noted the co-founder of Red Bull, Dietrich Mateschitz. Uh, I know you had quite a relationship with him. How do you define the emotion that you guys were experiencing there in Austin? And what is his influence? Well, of course, he was a, a huge influence in everything that we did. It was his passion, uh, not just within Red Bull Racing, but the whole Red Bull group. And, uh, you know, that lives on today. And, um, you know, the passion, uh, the determination, the fact that, you know, we're mavericks, we're pushing the boundary, we're doing things differently. And then, you know, hence we're here the only team to announce in, in, in the U.S. And, uh, you know, we're getting on with uh, and preparing for the season ahead. We're very exciting uh, about it. We've got tremendous support from, from Red Bull and the shareholders and uh, uh, looking see forward to this, this busy season in 2023. Uh, I was going to ask you, what are, what's your perspective for 2023 with Red Bull and Honda? Well, it's going to be a, a, an incredible season. Our, our rivals, you know, for sure, um, you know, haven't stood still. So, you know, we're expecting you know, Ferrari to be competitive. Mercedes uh, are going to be there. You know, there's some other teams that could well make some big progress as well. So this time of year, it's, it's all a big unknown. And it's a question of focusing on ourselves, on doing the best that we can. And then in Bahrain, in a couple of weeks' time, we'll get to see everybody's, uh, everybody's car. And we'll realize, you know, have we missed something? Have we not? And then we set off on this 23-race journey between... You know, March and November, and uh, you know, there's going to be highs and lows along the way, I'm sure. But I think we're in a good place and looking to carry on that momentum from last year. As we noted just a moment ago, one of the most impressive parts of 2022 was the fact that you guys started in the top four in every single Grand Prix during the season. Define for me what that means. Like, what is the challenge to achieve that? Well, I think consistency is incredibly important, and I think that. You know, what we achieved last year with you know, 17 victories out of 22 races, two out of the three sprint races, you know, we hit a level that we haven't, you know, previously and with both drivers, you know, delivering was uh, a, f a phenomenal performance. And I think that we're going to have to be at the top of our game this year um, because, you know, the, the drivers, the teams that we're up against, you know, they're, they're hugely competitive and skillful teams. So, um, you know, we're going to have to be at the top of our game uh, this season um, and uh, yeah we're looking forward to it you know it's been a good winter it's been a 
chance to recharge the batteries, get focused on the regulation change for this year, some subtle changes you know, with the cars for this year. But you know, everybody's ready to go racing again. And what can you share with us about Gran Toro 2023? I know it's a huge initiative. Yeah, it's a big initiative. It's something that uh, we did in Europe um, last year, which is basically, uh, well, it's, I don't think you can call it a rally, but it's um, a bunch of enthusiasts in, in very nice cars going from, from um, the UK to Austria last year. We're doing that, we're gonna do that again in Europe. Um, and we're gonna do a, a, a road trip as well from, um, you know, in the build up to, to the Vegas race from uh, Los Angeles across. So that's a, that's a great initiative. We met some great people and fans of the team on that. And the drivers are gonna get involved. Um, you know, Daniel and David Coulthard will be getting involved in that. Really appreciate your perspective, your leadership of the program. Thank you so much, Christian. We'll see much more of you here in just a bit. Right now, folks, let's take a moment to celebrate some of the athletes from the world of Red Bull. As one of the most visible sponsors in extreme sports globally, Red Bull is an energy drink that broke the mold of what's expected from a brand. Now, please welcome Red Bull athletes, Eileen Gu, Miles Chamley Watson, Seth Powell, and Leticia Buffoni. So let's start with you, Eileen. Uh, at only 19 years old, you're Olympic champion, professional freestyle skier. I would like to highlight some of your, uh, that you have, some of the highlights of your career. You're the youngest Olympic champion in freestyle skiing one of only a handful free skiers to compete in all three disciplines and first freestyle skier to win three medals at single winter olympic welcome how are you thank you so much for having me i'm super excited to be here i love f1 so much and it's really exciting to be such a be a part of this monumental event um and to share it with all these incredible athletes now tell me Aline, um you know red bull racing just won two championships in a row something pretty difficult to achieve What's the key in your sport that allows you to, keep, to continue to perform at the top level? Absolutely, I think sports are so physical, right? But a huge part of it really is mental. And a lot of people sometimes overlook that. There's so much mental training that goes into it, learning to deal with pressure, learning to love pressure, learning to overcome it, and learning to be the best version of yourself when the world is watching. And I think that's something that Red Bull does so well because Red Bull strikes this incredible balance of both symbolizing the epitome of everything that action sports are, while also building this family and this sense of community. So we all love what we do so much. We're all the best in the world at it, and somehow we're all best friends with each other. So that's something that's really incredible. You talk about balance, and tell, please tell me, how do you balance and prioritize all the aspects of your life? From being a professional athlete, a model, attending Stanford, you seem to be equally driven in all of these activities. <laughs> I'm actually in my midterms right now. Um, I wrote my philosophy paper on the way over on the red eye. So that's how I balance it. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think for me, everything comes down to passion. I love fashion because I think it's so personal and expressive. And it's a way that I can really be myself through the way that I look. On the other hand, I think skiing really embodies those same traits, but in the way that I feel, in the way that I ski, in the way that I am in the air. And then finally, school to me is, it's the cognitive aspect, it's the intellectual aspect, it's the way I approach all the other things. And that's what allows me to deal with pressure. It's what allows me to love fashion and to really nerd out about all the materials and the designers. And everything really is interconnected for me and truly it comes down to the fact that I love everything I do. They balance each other out really well and it won't let me get burned out. Good. Now welcome to world, two-time world champion and 2016 Team Olympic medalist in fencing, Miles Chandler Watson. Hi, how are you, Miles? I'm doing great, thank you. Thanks for having me. It's uh, lovely to be here back in cold New York uh, for a lovely event, so thanks again. Miles, tell me, how is Red Bull different from other companies that partner with athletes? Um, well, Red Bull's definitely, they were the first sponsor to ever sign me, but they definitely care 
about the athletes. You know, they ask us questions. Um, they've been, you know, helping me build and change the sport. Um, and they're very, you know, encouraging and always behind me, which is something that, as a partner, I always look to have. Uh, and they're just amazing people. And it's not really a sponsorship, it's a family, which is, I think, everybody up here, you know, I love, I see them around the world, and it's like truly a family. So that's how they're different in many ways. Now tell me, what attracted you to F1? Um, I mean, as a kid growing up in London, I've always loved F1. I've always loved driving fast. Um, and I'm, I'm obviously heavily invested. And I just think what they do is, it's honestly incredible. And then when you get to see it up close, you really get to see that they do put their lives on the line. Um, and I think the TV doesn't do justice. So like when you go and see a race, you really see like how mad they are. And it's really incredible to see. So, yeah. Perfect. Now, next up fresh of X Games in Espen is 23-year-old Seb Powell. Hi, Seb. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? All good. Thank you. Can you describe your unique style of riding and please explain me what is the knucklehawk? Um, so, my unique style of riding is it's a lot different from normal snowboarders because of Pretty much how spontaneous it is. I could have an idea of what I want to do, dropping into a jump or rail or whatever. But the second I get up to it, or I'm about to take off, eh, I could completely switch what I'm going to do. And that's what makes it so spontaneous and unique. And then knuckle hug, that is? So for knuckle hug, um, it's kind of hard to explain. It's like, so pretty much instead of using the jump, um, you use the landing. So like, this is the knuckle pretty much. and. Do you need it, to use my hand to explain <laughs> it? Yeah. So you got the jump here, yeah. usually. Uh -huh. But you take off right here instead. And like this gives you a little pocket of air. Or, what, or not air, but like you can manipulate um, your body and use your board to like flip and spin in certain ways that you can't do on a normal jump because you don't go as high in the air, pretty much. OK, and now please tell us about the sliding tour, an event that you created to promote inclusion and aims to make the mountain more colorful. So sliding tour, um, Red Bull gave me the opportunity to pretty much give some energy back to the East Coast. Um, it's where snowboarding started, so it's birthplace. A lot of events are like all over the world and um, we're on the West Coast. So there's not much energy on the East Coast, so we pretty much go to mountains, shoot, um, film on rails, jumps, and invite um, all the people, like all the locals to come snowboard with us. And it's pretty cool because we didn't really, um, it, er, sorry. It's pretty cool because um, we just, it gave me this niche that I didn't know I had, which is just riding with a lot of them, a lot of people. And um, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting what I'm saying. It gave me this niche of pretty much inviting. It's like it, it welcomes people to um, <laughs> um, what is the word? Oh, I'm, it's like pretty much getting involved just, with the sport. Yeah, um, like we have kids pretty much come out and it, it's like you just make them feel welcome and ride yeah. with them. It's not really just a session for us, it's a session for them. And then like, pretty much we just, pretty much have as much fun as possible and it makes them feel really involved with the sport. And um, just a lot of fun. Sounds great. And now, welcome six time X Game skateboarding gold medalist, Letitia Buffoni, an icon in women's skateboarding. Hi Letitia, how are you? I'm good, how are you? All good, thank you. You competed in the Tokyo Olympics where skateboarding debuted. Please tell me about the emotions of being there. Man, it was crazy. I never thought in my life I'd be competing in the Olympics and representing my county. And it was just, it was amazing. It was a lot of nerves and I want to do it again because it was amazing. Now, we saw your recent sky grain video. Please tell me how to come up with, prepare for it. It was crazy. Oh my God. It was a dream of mine that I had about five years ago. And I brought to Red Bull. They loved the idea, and of they course. wanted to do it. Uh, it took us a long time to prepare and organize everything. I had to train a lot. I had to do over a hundred jumps for the actual jump, and it was a lot of work. But we made it somehow. Worth it. <laughs> it was. It was amazing. Yeah, it was. It was a dream come true. Cool. Eileen, uh, you attended last year the Monaco Grand Prix and Miami. 
tell me about the experience of being in those Grand Prix. Well, I'm a huge adrenaline addict. I think everybody <laughs> on this stage is. But really, seeing it in person truly is so different. The drivers are going so fast. I can't even imagine moving at that speed. And having to make reactions just like that, it really shows how you have to be so dialed in. You almost have to be subconscious and functioning as though you and the car, the driver and the car are one. And that is just something that I admire so much. I admire excellence in any field, but in a sport like F1, I really, 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 I love watching <laughs> and I have so much respect for the drivers. Miles, you were two in Miami, and you did an, an Instagram takeover. So tell me about that. And are you planning to attend to another race this year? Uh, yeah, so Miami was so hot. My yeah. God. Um, I definitely love uh, going to races. I'll definitely be at more. Um, I think we can settle the dispute that F1 drivers are athletes. So if I hear this again, okay, they are fully athletes because it's so crazy what they do. Um, and I hope to go to Vegas. Um, for the race, definitely hope I make it back. So, Red Bull, I'll be there. Um, and yeah, and Instagram. Oh yes, oh, yeah. Instagram will be there too. But yeah. it was a nice little takeover to kind of show the fans and people that watched it what really goes on at the races. You know how it's a huge team and it's not just like the drivers. So I think it was cool to show the different you know perspective. So it was lovely. So I'll definitely be back again. Perfect, Seb. How was Miami for you? Rumors said that you're going back this year. I'm definitely going back. That was actually so much fun. Um, I've never been to a race either. And um, to show up and kind of see how it goes and like see how they operate, it's all so intense. Like we were at the end of the mile stretch in Miami and I had no idea. They, they like literally sound like jets coming down and then they do like almost a 90 degree turn. And like just to slow down to that speed after going like jet speed was crazy to see. We got to go to the paddock, too, and to see all, how they all operate, like how top secret it is in there, too. It was all really cool to see, and um, we'd love to do it some more. And what about you, Leticia? Tell me about the experience in Miami. I've been to many races, but Miami was definitely my favorite. I think just everything about Miami, the weather, which <laughs> you didn't like it, uh, the parties, everything about it was beautiful. I can't wait to go back. Good. Well, let's thank to you all for joining us here today and enjoy the races you will attend this upcoming season and please keep pushing uh, all the limits on the world sports. Let's check in with Marty. What do you have, Marty? It's so inspiring to hear the amazing paths that those awesome Red Bull athletes have taken to the pinnacle of their sports and to see how committed Red Bull continues to be in the world of extreme sports and learn about it from those amazing athletes themselves. Oracle Red Bull Racing continues to put fans at the forefront of everything they do. 2023 will be no exception. Let's take a look at someone else who's getting involved. How cool is that? I mean, that is, that is cool, and I'm actually a little disappointed. I got to be honest. I thought Christian was going to show up today wearing that suit. <laughs> yeah, it was impressive. Why didn't you get that suit, man? You'd look fantastic right. in that suit. It is time now uh, to talk about an exciting opportunity for all of you at home to get more involved with Oracle Red Bull Racing than ever before. We're launching a competition called Make Your Mark, powered by Oracle. Christian, what more can you tell us about this initiative? Well, this is very much about getting the fans involved in uh, the livery and the look of the car. So for the, uh, the three U.S. races that we have this year, for the, for the first time ever, we're going to get the fans involved to uh, create 
the livery for those three races. It's going to be a competition. It's a huge opportunity, and we've thought long and hard about it. But we know uh, it's what people want to want to see to be able to get involved. And this is your chance uh, to be able to do that. So for the first race, obviously, U.S. race in May in Miami. Um, the competition opens, uh, I think, today. Um, and uh, to you know, get involved and come up with some interesting liveries that there'll be then a, a panel of judges and, uh, and we'll pick out the best and most striking ones for, for these three How iconic fun. races. How fun. I mean, what an awesome initiative to get the fans even more involved than, they, than, than they've, they've ever been. For more information on this, guys, uh, make your mark. You can, be, you can go to the paddock and no doubt across social media you'll see so much more on this initiative in the foreseeable future. Head to redbullracing.com forward slash the paddock to find out more. Absolutely awesome, awesome opportunity for the fans. It sounds amazing and definitely I'm gonna get on board. Something special happening here with Mr. Doodle and the RB14 show car, right? Yeah, so we saw the, the video of Mr. Doodle there um, taking one of our uh, you know, old show cars and, and he's done a unique uh, livery on it. You can see it's, it's, it's pretty special, it's a piece of art. Now that, we're going to auction that car for you know, our charity, our nominated charity, Wings for Life. Uh, and every single penny um, from that auction for that car um, is going to go to the charity. So the auction, again, is going to open. I think it opens today um, through Christie's. And, uh, yeah, hopefully. I mean, it's going to look great in somebody's living room. Um, <laughs> Yours? Or it's on somebody's wall. I mean, it's a fantastic piece of, a piece of art, you'd have to stay. And it, I mean, this guy, he's doodled his entire house. Uh, he lives in a house that looks like Did that. Did he do so, your house? Um, no. Um, <laughs> but uh, Max was, you know, saw him doing it, was hugely impressed. So uh, maybe he's going to put in a bid as well. So what you're telling me is when you guys get to Miami, it's Max who's going to be wearing that suit. Well, <laughs> you, you, you never know. But uh, yeah, look, this is a, a really cool initiative to, to buy you know, one of our former cars. They're not, you know, we don't sell many, many cars. It is a show car, but you know, in this unique uh, doodle livery um, and every single penny going towards, you know, Wings for Life that's looking to find a cure for spinal cord uh, injury and damage. I love that it benefits Wings for Life. That is, that is wonderful. Okay, guys, now we're going to hang out with a very special person and we're going to welcome him back home to the world of Oracle Red Bull Racing. It's our boy and we're happy to have him back. Please, let's give a big round of applause and welcome back eight-time Grand Prix winner and one of the friendliest drivers in the F1 grid, Daniel Ricciardo, to Oracle Red Bull Racing. <laughs> Daniel, you spent uh, the first decade of your Formula One career with Red Bull. Now, you're back as a third driver. How does it feel to be back in this stage? Feels amazing. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it feels, yeah, it's like returning home, you know, and uh, after uh, kind of uh, in this now like second kind of second phase of my career, uh, it feels warm and cozy, a lot of familiar faces and uh, yeah, back in the family, a lot of, lot of fond memories. Can you explain us a little bit more about this new role that you will have with the team? Yes, yeah, so I'll do... I'll attend some races, obviously, and, and it's really just to help also develop the car, use my experience, a lot of simulator work, and, um, and yeah, just keep, keep involved uh, in the sport, obviously, keep, keep a close eye on what's happening and uh, try and obviously help the team as much as possible. Uh, more, more obviously behind the scenes, but uh, yeah, when I'm trackside as well, I'll get, uh, get nice and close to all the engineers and find out uh, yeah, where I can help and, and contribute. What was your reaction watching Max and Oracle Red Bull Racing winning a back-to-back -back world championship in 2022 and the addition of the Constructors title? I mean, uh, at the time I was definitely envious because I was you know, <laughs> competing uh, against them last year. But it was, it was really, honestly, really cool to see. And, you know, the start of the season was like nip and tuck, you know, with uh, the battle with Ferrari as well. And then the way that uh, Red Bull was able just to kind of continue to press on through the year and, and ultimately dominate what, it, what looked like really the second half of the season was really impressive. You know, so many 
members of the team I, I worked with and I was so, so happy for, and uh, really cool to see them back on top. You are the first person we haven't seen this year in real, in person, uh -huh. wearing the new Castor kit, the kit that you will be using in 2023. So please tell me about this kit. What are your thoughts on this Castor kit? Maybe you can... Do you want model? me to model? Yeah. Da -na 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 -na. Great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, as you can see, it's, it's very flexible, very um, usable, <laughs> wearable. Uh, so no, it, look, it looks great. I mean, for me as well, like putting the Red Bull uniform back on, obviously it's a new Castor one as well, but just, uh, yeah, it's like, uh, it's, a, it's a happy feeling for me. Certainly some strong like nostalgia and all of that. Um, but yeah, I think we look good. Uh, I did a workout in it this morning. Not really, we had an early start, but I'll do a workout later and let you know how it is. <laughs> it's really good. You look great. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel, for being here with us. It's a pleasure to see you back with the team. And right now, let's take a look at the 2023 branch it. True to form, Oracle Red Bull Racing got fans involved, making them one of the first people, besides Daniel, of course, that were uh, lucky enough to wear the new Castor team wear for 2023. Our fans were also treated to a sneak peek of the new range of caps and footwear developed by the team by US-based pioneers New Era and APL. What a lineup. Let's check it out. Everyone's excited. You're competing against the best in the world. Same goal. It's about winning. For me, the most important thing is that I can be myself and really express myself. It's about what people don't see. Like they say, it's what you do in the shadow. It definitely is a very big team effort. At the end of the day, it's all to try and push the team forward. They give everything. We are all in that car, although I'm driving. What do we have here? New team kit. That's exactly what you want. We're gonna be pretty fresh. still you know growing learning getting more experience um, on track off track in general in life but to be honest my goal uh, is just to try and be better again i'm gonna give my best throughout the year try to be a good example for the younger generations Hey, ladies and gentlemen, the stars of the show are here. Say hello to two-time defending Formula One world champion Max Verstappen, Checo Perez, and of course we welcome back Christian Horner, team principal as well. Checo, I want to start with you. Welcome to New York, man. What should it tell us that Oracle Red Bull decided to have the season launch right here in the United States of America? Yeah, well, I think it's growing so much in the U.S., the support for, for our team. Uh, everywhere we go, you know, we have already three races in the U.S. and we can see that definitely we're getting a lot of support. We're becoming the favorite team uh, of this country, which is great. So, yeah, we're very privileged to have so much support from, from the U.S. Max, it's one thing to win one world championship. Obviously, it's a dream. But to defend it is an entirely different challenge. Why were you and your team able to do that? Uh, well, I mean, of course, we did last year, but um, yeah, we're just very excited to, um, you know, to come here. We know, like Checo said, the U.S. is incredibly important to us. We are going to have three races now this year. I think we're all very much um, looking forward to, and uh, they're also very different to 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 each other, you know. So, um, yeah, to to be here today, um, and also from our side, you know, we're very optimistic again for for this year, and of course, you know, we're gonna try to, uh, to defend that title. Checo, as we discussed earlier with Christian, um, you guys were the only team to, have, to start in the top four in every Grand Prix of 2020. What's the challenge of accomplishing that? Yeah, definitely it's to keep progressing. You know, the competition is getting better, and so we have to keep progressing. We have to be better than we were last year, and that's going to be really difficult. Uh, but as a team, we, we're giving everything. You know, it's been a very busy winter for, for all of us. So we're really looking forward to the start of the season. 
One of your main jobs, Christian, is to try to achieve something that resembles harmony within the organization. What is the challenge when you have two world-class championship caliber teams battling against one another to maintain that harmony? Well, we're, we're very lucky. We've got two, two fantastic drivers, and uh, you know, their combined efforts the last two years have been, been stunning. Obviously, you know, that first Drivers' World Championship for Max in 21, and then you know, the, uh, the double championship last year, and uh, you know, winning 17 Grand Prix between the two of them, and uh, you know, first and third in the, in, in the Drivers' Championship, and of course, bringing home that Constructors' Championship back to Oracle Rebel Racing for the first time in eight years. And uh, y you know, these guys, uh, you know, it's, I think it's the best pairing we've ever had in, in Formula One. It's uh, been hugely successful, and um, you know, we're going to need every bit of that this year as we go against some, some big opponents, um, you, know, with, uh, you know, with the other teams looking to come back at us uh, after you know, such a dominant, dominant season last year. But uh, you know, we're very fortunate to have two, two such talented drivers. Max, you don't strike me as someone who rests very much. You seem to continue to want to push and find the maximum performance within yourself. But as you have reflected on back-to-back -back championships, how do you define what you've achieved so far? Um, yeah, of course, uh, it's been great. Um, when you're a little kid and you're working towards your, your dream, your goal, first of all, that is to try and become a Formula One driver. Then, of course, the next steps are about trying to win a race, you know, put the car on pole, and then eventually the big dream is, of course, to win a championship. And uh, once I, I achieved that, of course, for me, like, um, a lot of pressure fell off my, my shoulders because I felt like I had every, like, achieved everything I wanted. Um, in my sporting career, but then it's all about trying to stay there because that's probably even harder than getting there. Um, and that's why I think last year was a very good test, you know, to see if we could do that. But also from my side, you know, I constantly try to, to improve myself because nobody is perfect. And I think throughout, <clears throat> throughout your whole career, I think you are always improving learning uh, from just general life experiences, but also on track. You know, there are always things that you can do better, and that's always what I'm. I'm questioning myself, asking myself, where can I be better? And that's, of course, what I'll try to do again this year. Best of luck. Uh, a tremendous season ahead uh, with so much promise. What are you most looking forward to in the coming season? Well, definitely to have a, a good time with the team and to improve what we've done last year. And, um, yeah, I think if we're able to do that, then it will be a, a great season. You know, it's such a long long year ahead that they, they, we, we just have to be, make sure we are full of energy, which we are fully recharged and ready to go for, for this new season. Well, what you've built is a championship expectation now. So how do you define success in 2023 for this program? Well, it's a, a different situation for us, you know, defending those titles. We go from being the, the hunter to the hunted. And I think that, uh, you know, everybody in the team is, is so motivated and, and fully up for this challenge. I think you know, having tasted that success last year, you know, some subtle regulation changes for this year, um, you know, everybody back in the factory is, is just pushing flat out. And, uh, you know, we're excited to see the car for the run for the first time. Um, only three days of testing before we go racing. Um, and, and then, you know, as these guys say, it's, it's going to be nine months traveling around the world, uh, you know, racing at all these different venues. And uh, it's going to be, I, I think, an incredibly competitive year this year. For both of you, here in the United States, we're seeing this explosion of popularity in Formula One. How do you describe the global passion of the F1 fan base? Um, well, I think, you know, new ownership um, definitely focused more on the, on the U.S. as well because we knew that we were definitely lacking there still. So they definitely have done an incredible job in, in boosting it in the U.S. And then, of course, also through Netflix. I guess everyone in here has Netflix. So um, They're we, here. Uh, They're here somewhere, <laughs> brother. Yeah, I signed well, my life away. <laughs> you watch a lot of Netflix, right? So, of course, having the series on, on Netflix helped a lot to get a bit more of an insight of, of everyone's uh, racing career because it always felt like probably F1 was quite a closed environment you couldn't really get into. So when you have a bit more behind the scenes, uh, like cameras and footage, I think that, uh, that helped a lot that you can see a little bit more of the, the personality behind it as well. When you go home to Mexico, it is crazy. How do you describe the passion of the fans. Yeah, certainly the, the passion uh, of the sport has grown a lot. You know, like Max says, you know, I think certainly Netflix has, has put the people, the fans a little bit closer to, to the drivers, to the teams. They're more into what we go through, you know, because we go through so much for 
nine months a year. You know, uh, we have good days, bad days, so we show a lot of emotions. And the fans are always with us, you know, so we are very privileged to, to have them and the, to, to receive the support we get, you know. So, yeah, I'm extremely lucky to have the amount of support I, I get around the, around the world and especially here in the U.S. Love it. Christian, what is the team's plan for show runs in 2023? Well, we've got a, a, a busy, um, you know, a, a events ahead of us. We've got, I think we're doing about 20 show runs. So, uh, you know, Daniel um, being back in the team, he's going to be driving at all kinds of different venues. And, uh, you know, this includes two in the U.S. Um, they're going to be announced, uh, you know, in Chicago and Nashville. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to taking Formula One to the people. And, uh, you know, the show runs have been tremendously successful in terms of just exposing Formula One, seeing these cars where you wouldn't expect to see them and uh, you know, lighting up the streets in Chicago and Nashville is gonna be a, a lot of fun this year. Really appreciate your perspective, gentlemen. Thank you so much. And I gotta tell you, Christian, Daniel Ricardo let loose in Nashville, Tennessee, unsupervised is a scary, scary thing. Oracle Red Bull Racing has always pushed the limits on where to go next. Let's take a look at the ultimate road trip across America from Oracle Red Bull Racing. Initiate car drop, Manhattan, Nevada. Max, they've dropped the car off in the wrong Manhattan. I need a car in New York in 36 hours. You got it, boss. to race the streets. It's going to be even better when there's no traffic ahead of you. Max, get to Austin and hand over the checker. Hell yeah. The Hacks for Stafford, you are world champion. We are world champion. Thanks, amigo. Checo, we need you at the launch. Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. Go over there, brother. I'm sure it looks like a championship car. That is a beautiful, yeah. beautiful racing yeah. machine. I like the matte finish on it. Christian, what more can you tell us about the RB19? Um, well, obviously, the regulations are very stable, so it's taking all the lessons from you know, the, uh, the, the, the RB18 that was, of course, you know, our most successful ever car. There's been some subtle aerodynamic changes. Uh, that affects all of the teams and so uh, you know harnessing and trying to optimize those um, is one of the challenges the tires are slightly different as well this year within the, the new regulations but uh, RB19 draws on all uh, the strengths hopefully from what uh, was as I say our most successful ever car. Max what were your thoughts on the first time that you saw the RB19? 
it's right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> what are your thoughts? <laughs> well, I, uh, you know, I think our livery, you know, has been pretty similar for a couple of years now. But I actually, you know, always find it a cool-looking car. It really shows you, you know, the Red Bull colors all over the place. And, um, you know, it, it, we have had a lot of success like that. So why do we need to change it up a lot? Of course, we have a few more partners on, on the car, a few new partners as well. And that's where it's all about. Checo, what's the testing process for you guys as you prepare for the season opener in Bahrain, March 3rd? Yeah, for now, it's, it's about getting up to, the, to, the, to a good physical level before the season starts because it's a very short time that we get in the car. We're going to be having just a day and a half uh, each in the car before the season starts. So it's really how much you can do now and, uh, and the work you do with the engineers for now. And um, that's, that's the, the key, you know, that's uh, the most you can do. Daniel, what about the same work that you'll be doing back in the factory? Uh, we were just talking about it, actually. So, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll be there uh, in a couple of weeks getting, getting ready for the season and a lot of sim work. I mean, that'll be a lot of, uh, let's say, my work and my contribution and uh, let the boys take the track stuff and, and I'll be working, uh, yeah, behind the scenes and, again, try to just develop the car, help understand the direction also that, that Checo and Max want to take it and, uh, yeah, try and lend some of my experience as well to, to the track and, and the engineers. Max, have you done any testing in it yet? Have you done any testing at all in that um, yet? <clears throat> only on the simulator. What, what's the, what are the differences? Yeah, I mean, you know, coming out of uh, last year, you get a bit of a picture of what you want from, from the car, what you want to improve. So that's what we tried to do with this year's car. I cannot get into too many details about it. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, you constantly just try to make it better. <laughs> and that's what you're working on. Um, on. On the simulator, you try to really, you know, get, get the reference between the simulator and the real track. You try to correlate it as well as you can. And, uh, yeah, that's a continuous process. But uh, the first feelings have been, uh, have been really good. Checo, now that you've seen the car, uh, what are the, mo the, the things that you expected the most for the 2023 season? Well, once you get to see your new car, you really get excited and you really uh, realize that, it, that the season is about to start. So I'm looking forward to, to it. You know, it's going to be a very long season, plenty of races. So, so for me, I think it's very important, you know, Bahrain, to get to, to meet the car, see how it is. And, and hopefully we have a very first good introduction because that, that will set up to, to a great year. Daniel, Thanks. you've had quite a journey uh, from the last time that you were with the Red Bull team. How are you different? How have you evolved since you left here four years ago? Well, I think you, I mean, every year in the sport, you learn so much and I feel like you grow up a lot quicker as well. Um, I mean, I'm still immature, but like in other ways, <laughs> you grow up. And uh, yeah, it's like I've gone through, you know, in, in, that, in that time since 2018, uh, gone through some challenges, you know, certainly uh, some things I was, you know, uh, let's say proud of and, and learned a lot from, but also, uh, yeah, challenging times and the, uh, you know, like character building stuff where you have to dig deep and kind of find, find yourself a little bit. Uh, so yeah, to come uh, back into the Red Bull family and back to familiar ground, it's, uh, I think it's really perfect for me for, for this season and looking forward to, uh, you know, a different looking year for me. Great to see you back here, man. Thank Love you. your spirit so much. What an unbelievable show so far. We've already covered so much. Fans designing the RB19 for all three U.S. races. A welcome back to our favorite Aussie, Danny Rick, and a first look at the RB19. So much excitement for the upcoming season. What more can we take? Well, Marty, we know that 2026 will be, we'll see everyone next big step change. And today we have some exciting news to reveal for the team's future. Let's take a look at a special message for the Ford Motor Company.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome now the president and CEO of Ford Motor Company, Jim Farley. This is huge news to round out our launch event here in New York. Here he comes, as you can see, in a Red Bull themed E Ford. Jim, good morning. Morning. How you doing, man? I'm doing a, I'm doing great. Welcome. With all these people, it's fantastic. I know you all own Fords, right? It is fantastic, and I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna give you to the floor to share your news. Jim, you're first. Well, uh, I have to say, Ford is gonna return to Formula One after more than 20 years, and uh, we looked at a lot of options uh, as good business people and we wanted to go in the direction that was authentic to us. So we've decided to have a strategic partnership and a technical partnership with Red Bull powertrains to enter Formula One in 2026. And uh, we want to help Kristen and these fantastic drivers, the whole Red Bull racing team to deliver the goods on the track. It's a huge moment for the Ford family around the world. We have almost 200,000 employees and uh, we are really excited to engage a whole new generation of customers with our electric vehicles. So it's a, a big deal for us. We're really excited about the sustainable direction of the sport. Uh, we're on the same mission at Ford, and we cannot wait to go racing with you, Kristen. Fantastic. What are your thoughts on the partnership? Well, look, I mean, this is tremendously exciting. It's a, it's a big moment for us, for, for our team, for, for Red Bull Powertrains as we've started on this journey for 2026 and to welcome the Ford brand back into Formula One, you know, to become a Red Bull Ford you know, engine and power unit is going to be incredibly exciting. And for us, having the ability to draw on your experience, your, your EV knowledge and, uh, and, and just depth of resource is uh, you know, tremendously exciting. And I think from the first moment that we, that we met and spoke yeah. and, uh, you know, and, and with Bill Ford as well, um, yes. it was very clear that there was, uh, you know, a natural synergy between uh, the, the two companies. And it was a very uh, easy deal to put together because yeah. the desire was there from both sides. So, uh, you know, we're incredibly excited in this next chapter for, for Red Bull um, as we bring the power unit in-house, um, you know, with your support. So it's uh, yeah, a big moment for us. And uh, right. I know that Alpha Tori is also involved in this, correct? Well, it's, it's the power unit supply. So Red Bull powertrains you know, will be supplying both teams in, um, in 2026. So it's, you know, 2026 seems like a long way away, but it's in engine world, it's tomorrow. So we've got a lot of ground to cover. Uh, you know, in, in a three-year period from a startup, we're drawing, we've recruited some incredible talent. We've got some great people within the team. And now to be able to draw on uh, you know, all of Ford's uh, expertise and knowledge. And, uh, you know, Jim's a racer as, as, as well. He's, uh, so he's got that racing spirit. Um, and I think with Jim and Bill um, behind this project, um, you know, we're, we're really excited about what we can achieve. Well, Ford's commitment to greatness in racing is, is obvious uh, in other forms, and it will be obvious here. Yes, sir. Great to see you, Jim. Guys, I also heard on the street, I mean, the word is, is that Max and Checo have already been having a little fun in Ford's electric vehicles. Let's take a look. Max, I don't know much, man, but it looked like that super van could go, brother. What was it like driving that thing? Yeah, that was a, a crazy experience. I mean, it was a very cold day, but um, I got out there, and I have to say, zero to 200, unbelievable. Um, I think it was accelerating faster than a Formula One car, so uh, <laughs> it was incredible. Four-wheel drive, but I was still having wheel spins, so uh, yeah, it was good. It was a, a very fun day as well. Checo, you had the chance to drive the incredible Mac E 1400 in Atlanta. How did it go? Yeah, I had a lot of fun in, in Road Atlanta. Actually, it was a great track, and uh, it was really funny. 
And uh, yeah, the, the amount of power you get through, through the four wheels, it, it was pretty impressive. And um, yeah, I was pretty shocked also with the amount of downforce we had. So it was a uh, great preparation for the season. And Max, what experience did you got with the four cards? Yeah, it was a great experience. Like we had a few models there and um, also the F-150 Lightning. I think the Mackie was there basically. Like it is there, and uh, yeah, um, I got to experience it all. You know, the power, but also the comfort. Um, so yeah, it was a, a great day. I got everything was exp like was explained well to me. And um, the funny thing for me also to find out was that um, the F-150. Um, that if you have a problem with your house and you have no power, it can power your house for three days. So if I ever have an issue, I know what to do. <laughs> Good. How how are they going to leave you out of this? What, what, what are they doing? What, what, what are you doing with the, the new Ford vehicle? <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll see. I, I'm off to Detroit next week, yeah. so uh, I'm sure we'll have a bit of fun there. And uh, my, one of my go-tos, or my, uh, well, it's, yeah, I have a Raptor, so. That's what I was going <laughs> to yeah. say. I heard you had a Raptor. <laughs> I, I'm a truck guy, so, yeah, I, uh, I bought a Raptor, yeah, like five, six years ago, and, uh, and I love it. So um, that's, that's a little bit of the, uh, the Aussie in me as well, you know, with a big, big kind of, we call them utes, but they're called trucks out here. You already poke and gym to make sure that you get the best opportunity up there <laughs> at Ford in Detroit? I'm ready. <laughs> He's ready. <laughs> I love it. Thank you guys so much. We appreciate your insight. Let's take a look at another video. Thanks off. It's a cool truck, I like it. So cool. Ladies and gentlemen, we have one more very special guest today here in New York City. Can you please extend a huge welcome to the head of Formula One himself? Mr. Stefano Domenicali. I don't see him coming, but I, he is here. Uh, <laughs> he's here somewhere. Is Stefano coming? Knock, knock. I, I knock, knock. Him. Is it Stefano? He's on the way. Yeah. He's okay, he's walking. coming. He's coming. He's hiding. Yeah. In the meantime. Yeah. Uh, how do, you, how do you hope to be an ear and give some insight to these guys? I know you're going to spend a lot of time in the sim, too. Yeah, so also, like, on, on race weekends, you know, I'll listen in and I'll, uh, let's say, have, if I'm not at the circuit, I'll have access to all the communications and, um, you know, staying close with all the engineers and being on uh, chat channels with them and stuff and just finding out if there's anything, trying to figure out, like, what trends we're starting to see and... and because no, even if they're winning every race, like no car's perfect, you're always trying to chase something. So um, try and kind of understand the direction they want the car to, to go in and develop. And if I have an, an idea or something maybe I've learned in the last few years with you know, racing with uh, other teams perhaps, try to lend, lend some guidance or advice or, or something for me to test in the simulator and, and try it and give feedback if it's uh, maybe positive. Yeah, I mean, look, for us to have three such quality drivers to bring Daniel back home, you know, after four years, uh, you know, he went on his, on his journey uh, via the other teams. So, but to bring him back, you know, to have these three such quality drivers, uh, it really does feel like, um, you know, we've got the strongest, you know, lineup on the grid. And, you know, Daniel's going to play a key role uh, behind the scenes as well, uh, you know, commercially, as we uh, look to have a bigger footprint in the US, you know, he's going to be in Nashville and, and doing all kinds of different stuff as well. And, Obviously, with tire testing, he'll get a bit of running in the car and be looking to support the two, uh, you know, race drivers with the experience that, that he has. So, uh, you know, it's, it's great for us to have that, you know, that in, uh, in-house in the team. So, unfortunately, my friends, I've just learned from our, our group that Stefano is not here. Uh, he will not be coming out. So, uh, forgive me, he will not be here. But I did want to just continue with you guys just a moment. 
it's wonderful that Ford is re-entering the Formula One uh, arena. Walk us through what that initiative is for your company and how it unfolded with these guys. I think Ford is a really different company. I mean, Bill Ford, we have Ford family members here. It's a family company, and Bill was always committed to sustainability. Um, and it's about time that the management team catch up with his vision. I mean, our, our idea is we don't want to make generic cars. We don't make kind of the faceless vehicles. We want to have vehicles with an attitude. And this team represents that. And we want to win in the marketplace. But we want to go electric. And we want to, go, we want to be able to ship software to our cars. To, to have someone go zero to 60 faster because we threw it, you know, we, we sent software to the car. Um, that digital product, that electric product's coming out in the next couple of years. And we're really excited to work with this team on the technology side and also learn from them. The best aerodynamicists in the world are in Formula One at Red Bull. And the most important thing about making a small battery, because the battery is so expensive, is aerodynamics. So we can learn a lot from Formula One, like we did in the 70s and 80s, but for a while it didn't, the tech didn't transfer. Now it can. So we want to take the technology and we also want to expose a whole new generation of Americans to EVs so that they're not this boring point A to point B cars, they're trucks and personality vehicles. That's the strategy of the company. Christian, this is a, such an exciting, exciting time to be in Red Bull uh, Racing. Can you tell us about how do you define the magnitude of this area in, for the team? Well, I think it's, it's a huge um, you know, era for, for the team. And of course, as we transition into these new regulations into 2026, for us strategically, it was really important to have you know, the right partner. As Formula One moves to you know, pretty much a 50-50 split between hybridization and and combustion power and and so for us you know setting out on that journey we wanted to have a like-minded partner and uh you know in ford with the commitment that you guys have got to to the whole ev strategy and so on um you know we've we found that and uh you know it's great to see the ford brand coming back into into formula one formula one is 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 in such great shape at the moment with other manufacturers you know, joining us uh, as well in time for 2026. And the competition is going to be incredibly hot, but uh, I think the foundations that we're laying, um, you know, and the time that we have uh, in the build-up to 2026, we're, we're tremendously excited and very proud today to announce and welcome, you know, Ford uh, to, uh, to the Red Bull family. Us too. Thank you guys all so much for your time today, for your perspective, your insight, your passion. Everyone here and everyone watching all across the world appreciates what you do and admires what all of you do. Thank you. It is wonderful that Ford is back in Formula One. The RB19 looks amazing. Thank you all so much for joining us today for the Oracle Red Bull Racing Season launch here in New York City. The team is very much looking forward to the 2023 season with the ultimate goal of fighting for another F1 World Championship. A reminder, for Red Bull Racing content, head online to the paddock. It's where you'll be able to watch race highlights, read driver interviews, and get up close with behind-the-scenes insight throughout the season. This is all waiting for you at redbullracing.com forward slash the paddock. Have a great day, guys. Thank you. On behalf of the Racing team and our partners, thank you for watching.
Hello and welcome back to Oracle TV. What an incredible event that was packed with so many announcements like the Oracle Red Bull Racing partnership with Ford and the fan livery design campaign. So much to unpack there. For those of you who weren't with us this morning, I am Kendall Fisher, Oracle TV anchor, and I'm here with Kelly Britton, Oracle Red Bull Racing's Director of Brand and Communications. Hi, Kelly, thanks for joining us. Welcome. Amazing event today, how are you feeling? I'm quite pleased now, that bit's over, yeah, definitely. Right. Yes, yeah. yes. All right, well, like I just noted, we announced the fan livery design campaign, which is incredible, but for those of you who maybe missed it, or some people might be in shock about the opportunity, <laughs> can you provide a quick recap? Yeah, absolutely. So as you say, it's the reveal of our Make Your Mark competition, which is uh, gives the opportunity for our fans to design liveries for our three US races this year. Um, so first up is Miami. Um, so uh, what fans need to do is get online to the paddock. They need to be registered at the paddock. And then there's a lot more information on there, but it's it really gives our fans an opportunity to to kind of get into the heart of, of the team and for us to be able to bring them much closer and, and for them really to own a, a piece of history of the team. Okay, so I know they're gonna go in line, online and get some more information, but really quickly, how exactly will fans be able to submit their designs? What is the nuts and bolts of the contest? Okay, so first of all, they need to be registered with the paddock. So they need to go online at, at uh, Red Bull Racing forward slash the paddock. Um, from that point, then they need to go over to the activities part where they can download a, a, a PDF. Um, from there, they can then uh, input their design. And actually, they get the opportunity to see that design rendered in 3D, which is really cool. Um, then we just want to ask them a little bit about their backstory, like what was their inspiration about it, and then submit, and then they're good to go. Wow, incredible. Um, I think we're going to have some really creative designs roll through for sure. Is there anything that you're expecting or hoping for? I think if we look about look to the races, so first up is, is Miami, then there is Austin, and then there's Vegas. If we think about those kind of iconic cities, I think it would be great to see some of that iconography come through and the color schemes come through in those designs. I am genuinely excited to see what we're going to get. I am too. Um, but this is a pretty massive undertaking. Can you explain to our viewers how Oracle technology is really enabling a campaign like this? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, uh, fundamentally, this is this is housed on and run through the paddock, um, which is built on CrowdTwist. So it's our, our loyalty platform. Um, but then also, you know, we are notifying fans about it and we're communicating with fans about a the campaign and then the progress of the campaign um, by using responses, which our CRM system is built on so then there's you know there's the additional benefit that we can actually see fans journey through the website etc through using infinity iq so actually it's it's a combination of all these brilliant technologies that's allowing us to give this to our fans that's amazing and kind of taking it back a little bit to crowd twist and and everything else why is oracle uniquely positioned to handle such a massive campaign like this i think i think it's not just the the quality of the products but the fact that they communicate to each other and that we can understand where fans have got to, we can understand where in their journey they got to, we can uh, send them emails to give them a bit of a prompt to, you know, to come back and to, you know, to finish the journey and to get involved in the campaign. So I think it's that interconnection between them all and our ability to actually understand that whole journey. That's what provides the power. Yes, absolutely. And then even taking that customer journey a step further and how it impacts the business, right? Absolutely. So can you tell me a bit about this? I understand how this is going to raise awareness and um, definitely hype up the brand, but what about the business side of things? How is this going to impact the business? I mean, for us, it's, you know, we, we talk about bringing fans in, in kind of to the heart of what we do, and that's not just a, a kind of a marketing philosophy. That's very much across the organization as a, as, as a whole. And for us, it's a kind of a, it's a, it's a, it's a win, win, win aim that we're going for. So one is, is to uh, win for our fans. Um, the second is a, is a win for our commercial partners that we work with. And then a, a third is also a, a kind of a win for us. So it's these kind of campaigns that really give us that ability to, to kind of nail that win-win-win situation. And then we've got sort of specific strategic imperatives that really sit behind that. And, and one is, is kind of winning in the US. And what you've seen today is kind of a core part of that. Um, but that's really what's, what's at the heart is that win-win-win. 
Well, and speaking of, you know, you've been winning with your fan base. You have passionate fans all over the world. You have passionate fans here in the U.S. I know we're building upon that, but what is this um, initiative going to bring that's different? Why did you guys need to do this? I think it's, it's you're right. We are, we do have a lot of passionate fans and we are, you know, we can kind of consider ourselves fan fueled. Yeah. This is about giving back to fans and, and, you know, having them be seen. So having their their submissions actually vetted by our you know by our um our kind of our board um and for them to to really own that sort of part in the in the team's history so really it's 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 a bit of a reward a bit of getting them closer and bringing them into the heart through you know for their brilliant support that we've had throughout the season and then hopefully kind of you know igniting that support as we go into into 2023 Absolutely. Um, you know, we are talking to business leaders across all different industries of all different sizes and all different areas, taking this kind of out of Oracle Red Bull racing, out of sports and looking at this more generally. What is the importance of deepening your fan base, um, especially with a creative campaign like this? I think it's all the, the sort of ancillary opportunities that come with actually having a known fan base. But for us, it is that it, it is genuinely about understanding more, having data on our fans, knowing what what drives them, what drives their engagement, so that ultimately we can continue to fuel that engagement. That that is, I think, everything else. If you if you can genuinely nail that, then all of the commercial opportunities and the you know the the, the further partnership opportunities they come. As long as you are genuinely you know holding fans really central and you understand the kind of data and insight. That, that come with that. Well, you are certainly doing that. And what a way to kickstart this season with this campaign. We cannot wait to follow along. And speaking of the kickoff to the season, what else can we expect from the upcoming year? Well, from a, uh, from a kind of a, a fan perspective and a marketing offering perspective, we'll have lots more going on in the paddock. So you'll see lots more big campaigns like this. Obviously, we kind of need a, you know, a drumbeat of, of stuff for fans to get involved in, but there'll be some really big spiky moments for them to, to come, come on board with. The paddock itself is further developing, so we've got more games, we've got more features that are coming this year, so loads and loads to look out for. And I think in terms of the, you know, the team and the business as a whole, I would love a crystal ball. Yeah. I don't have it, but I think, you know, with the car and, and, the, and the lineup that we've got, I think... We're as well positioned as we can be, so I think it's fingers crossed. Let's bring in that third championship title in a row. That would be good. Well, thank you so much, Kelly, for joining us. Like I said, we look forward to the season ahead and the fan livery design campaign and how all of that will roll out. So thank you for joining us. And thank you for tuning in. This was such an awesome event. We loved being here with you. And hey, there's going to be tons more content to come all season long. So if you're not already, make sure you give us a follow and a subscribe no matter what channel you're tuning in from so you don't miss a thing. We'll be back here soon. See you later.